I'm having some pretty bad writer's block right now, so here's a bunch of things that I like about transit. I like how big transit feels. By no means is it the only big map, and I think that some of them may actually be bigger in terms of total playable area, but you can really feel the size of it, more so than any other map. Probably because it's just a big loop, so the locations are actually pretty far from each other. I like how distinct all of the areas are. You get a mixture of urban and rural environments, but the colors also differ quite a bit around the map. Obviously there's a lot of orange, but it's still several shades of orange. The power station uses much darker shades, whereas the town has lighter ones. And then there's something like the bus depot, which has more blues and grays, and the farm is just green. Transit has the worst Pack-a-Punch quest in all of Zombies history, so I like to play it as if there's no Pack-a-Punch at all, just like the first three maps from World at War. It makes it feel a little more unique. I really like the bus. It's your mobile fortress, it gets you through the fog safely, you can upgrade it with additional parts, and it even has a wall by on the ceiling. And Ted is my favorite character from Zombies. He adds so much more personality to this map. He moves around while he drives, he reacts to players, zombies, and the different environments, he gets mad if you attack him and will even kick you off the bus if you cause enough trouble, but most importantly, he has a schedule and he's going to stick to it. When you hear the bus's horn, you either gotta get on or get left behind, which can lead to some pretty chaotic experiences as you try to finish up whatever you're doing and race back to the bus. I personally still struggle to get the power on before Ted wants to leave. I like this map's spawn room, particularly at the start of the match. It does a good job at introducing buildables as a new mechanic, and I really like this window here where the zombies have to approach from very far away. I like that the mystery box is initially at the diner. Normally I would criticize a map for having the box too close to spawn, but on transit, even though you have access to it pretty early on, you only have a short window of opportunity to use it before the bus leaves. And once that happens, there's no easy way to go back for it, so you just have to make do with whatever you got. And you'll likely still need to pick up a couple wall guns anyway. I like all the extra areas, like the tunnel, the Nocturne Totem building, and even the shortcut from the diner to the town. They add a lot more depth to the map since there's more to see than just the five main areas. I really like that the town has no wall guns. I know a lot of people don't like this, but Transit is a map where people are supposed to keep moving around, so had there been a wall by in this area, where you can also find Juggernaug and plenty of open space, then people would have spent a disproportionate amount of time here running trains and buying ammo. But if that is what you want to do, then you can just play Town the survival map. I like that this bridge collapses when you go over it. It's just sort of a neat way to see the world falling apart around you. Also, fun fact, it only collapses if someone is around to see it, and if there's not, then the bus will still follow the same path as if it is broken. I like that there are hazards above the bus. Generally being on top of the bus is safer than being inside of it, but the trade-off for being up here is that you have to dodge various obstacles, and failure to do so will get you knocked off and left behind. The Avogadro is pretty spooky. He's just some nervous system looking dude that we release from a jar, who lives in the sky, occasionally comes down to attack us and then flies back up there when defeated. And back in the day, we had absolutely no explanation for this. We didn't know who he was or where he came from, he was just there. I like the fast travel system, with the street lights and the portals. It's a faster alternative to the bus, but at the expense of not knowing where you're going to end up. And a lot of the potential destinations are out in the fog anyway. I really like all of the turbines' different uses. You can use it to turn on perks or the street lights before the power is on, you could use it to open secret areas, you can use it to reactivate the bus, or you could even just use it to distract zombies. It just doesn't last forever, which keeps it from being game-breaking. I like that the characters have dialogue for when you enter and leave different parts of the map. Stuhlinger's quotes are my favorites. What's this tall stuff? C corn? No. Oh wow! I like that there are two options for the hatch. You can either put it in the bus for easier access to the top of it, or you can put it in the diner to have access to the Galvan Knuckles, both of which are valid. Building the jet gun is not fun, but I do like the concept behind it. Going around the map and coordinating with your team to bring the four pieces back to the town could have been quite fun. It just sucks that most of the parts are not at the bus stops, and that only one person gets to use the jet gun even if everyone helps to build it, and that the weapon itself just sucks. But the concept was good. And finally, I like that the zombies move so slowly while they're on the bus, as if they're struggling to keep their balance. If this were not the case, then the bus, which is a vital part of this map, would have been a death trap. And that is, um, all I've got. I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work on those other videos.